Hello, this is Jessica, Executive Communications Director for the 3D Business Launch Model and Associated Podcasts and Videos. If you've ever wanted to start and run your own personal business, this is the expert source of information from experts you want and need, whether you create a startup, acquisition, or franchise. This 3D BLM podcast number 3 covers the skills necessary to start your own home-based business including what we believe are the minimum requirements for you, regardless of your product or service. The 3D Business Launch Model, created by Jean H. Irwin, covers all aspects of developing and running your own home-based business. He is your personal mentor in developing any type of business. This podcast will greatly add to your understanding of all matters relating to your own home-based business. You can always reach us at 1-800-750. 8767 to answer any questions you may have or address any challenges we can assist you with. Again, that's 1-800-750-8767. Thanks for taking the time to listen to our podcast. You can also download a full copy of this podcast video by visiting YouTube and search for 3D Business Launch Model Videos. Thanks again for listening, have a wonderful day. Thanks Jessica, hello friends, this is Gene Irwin founder of the 3D Business Launch Model. In this podcast number three, we're going to talk to you about what type of skills do you have. And we're going to cover the skills needed to start a home-based business and what we believe are the minimum skills necessary for small business owners to create, develop, and run their own home-based business. Some of the things we want to talk about are development recommendations, which means not everybody is going to need to do all of these activities and roles at the same time but most new business owners understand that these are roles that have to be filled and they have to be filled with quality people. Whether that's you or someone that you work with or hire, it's necessary to cover all the bases. The skills needed to start a home-based business. The following titles and roles are all required in order to start and develop a business, regardless of size, market, product, or service. Most of these are embodied into the initial person or persons who start the business and assume several roles at once. They include the CEO slash president, the operations management, the sales management, marketing management, service management, office and administration support, mentors, and legal and accounting sources. Of the last two legal and accounting, we recommend that you use third-party vendors to help you with that particular part of your business because it'll be a while before you're going to need those on a full-time basis and it'll keep your costs down on the front end. But I'm going to give you some resources on the legal side. It's going to be very easy to do immediately because they're going to provide you with advantages and documentation that you need to get your business going. Skills needed to start a home-based business. CEO slash president. This person sets the tone and direction of the company and is responsible for all activities, product development, sales and deliverables to the end user or client. Operations Manager Usually, the chief of staff, the number two person deals with all of the day-to-day activities from sales, marketing, product development, to accounting and customer service. Sales Manager This role defines the growth and success of the company. Nothing happens without sales. This role is vital to the survival of the company and must take care of all product delivery, pricing and customer installation or service issues. Without sales, you don't have a business. Marketing Manager The role of the marketing manager initially is done by the sales manager until the operations are large enough to support a full-time marketing and advertising campaign. Service and Customer Support Manager This role is vital to the survivability of the business. It requires someone who lives and breathes the need to satisfy the customer's needs 24-7 while supporting the product and any warranty. Office and Admin Support Manager The office manager is often the admin manager and maintains all aspects of running the internal operations from initial contact with the customer to bookkeeping and accounting. Mentors and Consultants Mentors are critical to any startup, especially in the early phases of the business. They have been where you are now in your early stages of business inception and growth and can save months and thousands of dollars in avoiding early entrepreneur mistakes and shortcomings. 
Legal and Accounting Manager. The roles of legal and accounting can be sent to a third party for most of the first two years of the new business development, thereby reducing overhead and still maintaining quality responses. Thanks, Jessica. Hello, friend. This is Gene Irwin again. I'm going to take a look at now at each of these areas and give you specific information and guidance and recommendations for each of the areas that Jessica just talked about. The role of the CEO or president, this person or couple, sets the tone for direction of the company and is responsible for all activities, product development, sales and deliverables to the end user or client. In nearly all cases, the startup or acquisition of a business is completed by the primary focus of one or two people. Additional strategic people are added as funding and needs grow. In the case of small businesses, the new business owner is or are both the CEO and president. They must wear virtually all of the hats shown in earlier skills pertaining to the roles that must be addressed early and almost daily in order for the business to succeed. Those roles include CEO, president, operations, sales and marketing, service and customer support, office and admin, legal and accounting. If I was setting up a new business, the first thing I would do is look at the product, its purpose or product or service, how it would be priced, what the margins are, and who or what I'm competing with. Then I'd quickly find my first customer. Once you have that first customer, all you need to do is follow that model and multiply it a couple hundred times. With the internet, do it far and wide. Learning how to sell the product or service is actually a very natural extension of just telling someone why you started this business in the first place and what your customer can expect from you in the near future. Initial clients who solve a problem using your solution, whether a product or service, are most likely to be your best referrals. Treat them extremely well. Once you've created a few clients, you will want to develop one or two of them as a showcase client with substantial in-person service and treatment. Don't abuse their goodwill, but get them to agree to an on-site visit a couple times a month as your business grows, but don't overdo it. Keep them happy and growing. Continuing the discussion about the CEO and president, I will give you a few examples of how I addressed setting up several new businesses. Keep in mind, I am fearless when it comes to finding and creating a new business in a matter of a few days versus weeks or several months that it takes most other people. The first home office I set up was a small consulting company backed by a franchise I bought dealing with professional and managerial development. I used the training gained by attending several conferences at the franchise headquarters and repeated their instructions to new clients I developed. Over the first year, I had approximately 114 clients including six different McDonald's restaurant locations in the Northwest. Gross revenue was over $68,000 when my previous engineering salary was just $14,000 a year earlier. The next business I set up required a move to Houston, Texas and included leasing my first office with two small rooms. Although I had a base salary, my role was to discover clients in the architecture, engineering, and construction market. Eventually, I created a client base of over $3 million in sales during a two-year period. Clients included NASA, Gray Tool Company, WKM, and Geosource. As the National Product Sales Manager, I created a new division for a technical company out of the Boston area, dealing with the same market of architecture, engineering, and construction. The new division grew from zero to over $30 million in just three years. Clients included Dresser Industries, Amico, Texaco, and Defense Contracting. The final major development was to create a new 13-state region for a company called Symbolics, Inc., the first major artificial intelligence manufacturer in the world. Sales for the company grew to over $100 million in just three years. My team was successful in creating the largest sale ever by the company of approximately $4.3 million. Clients included MCC, Computer Thought, and Los Alamos Labs. Income the third year exceeded $225,000. In your particular new business, you are either developing a new product or service or representing one which is already created, and you might be able to piggyback your efforts on their marketing direction. If you elect to buy a franchise, they will already have figured out the best way to market their services and products and want you to expand their market share. Warning, keep in mind, 
I've warned you several times to review my franchise development video in order to learn the tips, traps, and expectations in owning a franchise. Many people believe that owning and operating a franchise is a great way to ensure success and provide for your future. It is, but just be aware in many cases you will have very little flexibility in what you can sell, when and where you can operate. You'll be greatly surprised to learn that nearly every aspect of running a business consists of doing it their way, not your way. So, you can't have it your way. As the CEO, perhaps the greatest challenge in knowing when and how to fund your business. It's similar to the age-old question of which came first, the chicken or the egg. Well, that's the same with the business. Which came first, the business or the funding? As the CEO and president, you will need to not only fund the business somehow, but you will also need to develop the marketing and operating plan. If you have not done so, that type of homework before, it will be extremely eye-opening to the extent that you may decide not to pursue the business. This podcast and video series assumes that you have elected to continue to create a successful business. Keep in mind, angel investors and other venture capitalists are not in it to lose. They are in it to get a 20 or 30 times return on their investment. You need to know that investors often lose on more than 50% of their investments, but look for that one company which will bring in the 20 or 30x more return to offset the losses. Operations Management Usually, the chief of staff, the number two person, deals with all of the day-to-day activities from sales, marketing, product development, to accounting and customer service. In many instances, this person is the more outgoing of the two or three people at the top of the company's management. The operations manager must be an expert at developing and knowing the details of every portion of the business. This includes controlling the product development or service development time frame. If your president and CEO is busy raising capital to create a prototype product, your role is to support the effort and quickly learn to cultivate prospective clients in any market your product fits. With the advent of the internet and access to millions of pages of data, it should be relatively easy to discern prospective clients as well as most likely competitors. This brings me to a very important topic, competition. On a visit to Martin Marietta, a defense contractor outside of Denver, I met with several mid-level managers. I also brought with me a cutout from a recent cartoon in the newspaper ready to display it to these two managers when the opportunity presented itself. Once you make a few thousand presentations, you will easily be able to determine what your prospects are thinking, doing, and worrying about. In this case, we were competing for a large project which called for an investment of several million dollars in CAD CAM or computer-aided drafting and manufacturing software. Although I had completely proven our more favorable quality and pricing differences between our product and all competition, they were very reluctant to tell me they couldn't accept our offering. That's when I left them with a cartoon depicting the following caption. Now keep in mind, these were career non-profit managers. And here's what the cartoon said. Nobody gets fired for choosing IBM. You see, IBM was the largest computer manufacturer at that time. They felt if they chose IBM, nobody would look at them sideways. Sales management and marketing management. Skills needed to start a home-based business. This role defines the growth and success of the company. Nothing happens without sales. This role is vital to the survival of the company and must take care of all product delivery, pricing, and customer installation or service issues. Without sales, you don't have a business. Most of the time, sales management also covers marketing management until the business is much larger. Well, Gene, that sounds kind of scary. Yep, it's meant to. Invariably, the president or CEO is not your best sales manager. Sure, he or she will lead the charge into the sales battle to whip up excitement with investors and referral sources, but he or she is not the person to run into the front line of sales, and you don't want them to either. Let me explain. Here's why. Often if you bring in the big guns to the battle of sales at the very beginning, a savvy customer will pin him or her down 
to have them make commitments on the spot which are not conducive to good business. It is best to leave the sales to an expert in that field. Remember, salespeople are not born. They are created out of hundreds, if not thousands, of presentations or more, and they are masters of understanding what features, functions, benefits, commitments, limitations, and contract terms mean, and those that are best for both parties. Notice that I said both parties. It is vital to your customer relationship that both parties win in every sale. I'll explain that more in detail in a later podcast or video, but just remember, a win-win relationship is the only way to sell. In most cases, the sales management deals with all aspects of prospecting for new clients, marketing, advertising, and all forms of communications external to the business. This certainly includes creating a correct website. You should notice that I'm emphasizing the word correct. More than 80% of small business owners and have websites do it wrong. I'll advise you how to do it right the first time, which addresses all of the issues we discussed in our podcast series. Sales and marketing management continued. This is a good time to point out some rules and regulations about prospecting. Time was that attorneys and other types of businesses were not permitted to advertise on TV, radio, and billboards. You most likely don't remember that. Here is another current issue. It is not legal for you to contact someone by phone at their home or their cell phone if they are not already in a relationship with you in some capacity. You can't use robotic automated calls to call residences or businesses in most states, but you can learn to do it right. For instance, if your client is primarily in business, he or she has waived the requirement to avoid receiving phone calls from other businesses. That's right. You can prospect any designated business nationwide, even at their residence, if they have a bona fide business number and address. The best way to do that is with an automated phone system. Aha! I got you now, Gene. You said you can't use robotic automated calls. Yes, that's exactly what I said. But a monitored and managed automated dialer is not the same thing as a robotic dialer. I've created a video entitled How to Automate Your Business Contacts. Take a look at it. It will become one of your best friends in the marketing department. It is capable of helping you make over 250 calls a day to secure new leads for your business, as well as automatically send emails and on-time business voicemails and keeps track with all callbacks and related tracking per client. Clearly, the concept of sales management is all-encompassing with your business. Why? Without sales, You don't have a business. Service and customer support management. This role is vital to the survivability of the business. It requires someone who lives and breathes the requirement to fulfill the important challenge to satisfy the customer's needs 24-7 while supporting the product and any warranty. If you take a few moments to remember what it was like to take your vehicle in to be serviced at a car dealer, not a specialized auto repair shop, but the actual dealer, you will notice several things. First, you'll be greeted by the service car manager or his or her designee. His or her job is to make sure your car is currently under warranty, or if not, that you know you are legally liable for all repairs of parts and service before you are free to go. You will sign a document that obligates you to be responsible financially in anything that isn't covered by warranty. One of the terms you agree to is an automatic mechanics lien on your vehicle if you don't pay. What are we talking about here? We are talking about the car dealer's major source of income from a profit center. While you see shiny new cars in the showroom with five to ten people rushing up to answer your questions and take you for a review or potential new or used car, that's not where the money is made in a car dealership. It's made in the warranty service repair shop and the finance department of every dealer nationwide. Sales margins are fairly low on new cars, a little better on used cars, but in any case, the dealer has to deal with carrying costs known as flooring. He or she spends a tremendous amount on overhead of insurance and carrying costs to have the luxury of hundreds of new cars positioned on his lot, rather than have you wait for your vehicle to be sent via shipment from the factory. What's the going rate? Each hour in the shop is worth anywhere from 80 to over $120 per hour, depending on the dealer and what is being done to your vehicle. Remember what I said in an earlier podcast. 
Most repairs take longer and cost more than originally quoted and are almost always late and inconvenient. Your day and time will be interrupted. Comments about service and customer support management. Your immediate area of concern in your new business is to determine what your terms and conditions of sale are going to be. Since you don't have an attorney on staff at this point in your business, you need to turn to those specialist websites which already have created a warranty in your type of business on a three-part form. These terms and conditions should be positioned to explain what the warranty is on your product and or service, and their entire focus should be to protect you and your business. Keep in mind, in the world of good customer service, the customer may not always be right, but he is always the customer. And admin support management. The office manager is often the administrative manager and maintains all aspects of running the internal operations from initial contact with the customer to bookkeeping and accounting. This person is often referred to as the office manager. Their key role is to make sure that the paperwork from all departments of the business is kept in correct files and that customers receive immediate and friendly service. See to it that phone calls coming from customers are routed to the correct person in an expedient fashion. Nobody wants to be put on hold. Nothing irritates a customer more than waiting for someone to take their call. You be different. Answer each phone call with a live person's response. But, while being friendly is a given, nobody should have to deal with rude behavior from someone else, especially customers or prospects, on the phone and including from irate customers. Neither should any of your staff. Protect your people from rude behavior. Protect your clients from bad products and poor service or an operative equipment. I guarantee you that one aw crap responsible from a customer will wipe out 250 attaboys when it comes to feedback. And in this world of Instagram, videos, ratings online, etc., your reputation and that of your companies can be won or lost and a single day of poor office and administrative support issues. Take care of your people first, your customers second, and the company will then take care of itself. Legal and Accounting Management The roles of legal and accounting can be sent to a third party for most of the first two years of the new business development, and I would suggest using a local bookkeeper. One caveat. My brother-in-law is a professional doctor in audiology. As such, he has helped hundreds of people with hearing issues. His in-house bookkeeper ended up embezzling nearly $50,000 in less than a year before she was caught. Don't give your bookkeeper the right to receive payments in any form except by check. Make sure that the accountant is up to date on a daily basis first, then weekly, after you know what to expect on your receivables and payables. With the exception of creating a great invoice with warranty information, typically called your terms and conditions of sale, you most likely won't need legal representation until there's an external threat to the business or an issue in that regard. In this situation, until you're large enough to handle the cost of a part-time firm representing your business, consider using a prepaid legal service known as Prepaid Legal in the past, now known as LegalShield.com. They are low-cost and give you immediate access to attorneys as part of your monthly service. I've had them protect my small consulting firm for over 20 years. Look up Legal Shield. Be glad you did. I've elected to save the comments about using mentors and consultants until the last segment. While I hope now to sound strangely self-serving, we are both, after all, in a relationship that you are beginning to understand what I bring to the table in helping you set up and operate your own home-based business. There are lots of potholes and errors to avoid. I've made a lot of them and can help you avoid the ones you don't know are coming. The real issue here is we're in this together, and I consider you my most cherished asset to develop and help succeed. Mentors are critical to any startup, especially in the early phases of the business. They have been where you are now in your early stages of business inception and growth and can save months and thousands of dollars and avoiding common entrepreneurial mistakes and shortcomings. Why should you consider having Global Funding and Acquisitions Corp? And Gene H. Irwin is your mentor and consultant. Well, that's a good question. I've helped hundreds of people become more successful in their careers, both in technical and non-technical roles. 
like you, I've worked for companies that I thought could use more flexibility in their management of people, products, and things, and as such, have made my recommendations known and felt. You should most likely know by now that I've written several books on the fields of business management, and for those who are ready to transition out of their business, a specific book on the secret of exiting your business. Look it up. Perhaps you feel more comfortable knowing that I've made over 12,000 presentations in my career, talked to thousands of people in seminars and hundreds of people in one-on-one situations. In the past eight years, I've developed an ongoing $6 million a year business and have over 1,500 clients who have relied on my expertise in vital situations. And, oh yes, there's that fact that I've created over $275 million in sales and contracts thus far in my career. My question is, will you let me help you? Hello, this is Jessica again. Jean has asked that I share with you some brief details about the minimum skills needed for small business owners. If you have questions about any of these details, please call us at 800-750-8767 or email us at ghigfac at aol.com. That's ghigfac at aol.com or call us at 800-750-8767. Here are the details we promised you. CEO slash President. The minimum skills necessary to be the CEO slash President of your own home-based business, with hope to create something which is profitable and sustains growth, include the following suggestions. A. The belief and passion for the type of business slash product slash service you are developing. B. An understanding of the types of roles and requirements needed to run a business. C. A willingness to seek out people who would be great to work with, and prospects becoming clients. D. Someone who is willing to listen to mentors or coaches who have been there and done that. E. Someone who can adapt quickly from stagnation and or incorrect assumptions. F. Unafraid to ask for help when needed. G. Learns to become a focused goal setter and achiever. H. Has a dogged determination to follow through on your goals, regardless of what everyone thinks. I. Treats internal staff and external clients and business suppliers with frankness and honesty. J. Willing to work hard and takes the time to reward family and staff for the effort and trust. Operations Manager. The minimum skills necessary to be the operations manager of your own home-based business, with hope to create something which is profitable and sustains growth, include the following suggestions. A. Perhaps more than any trait, this person has a passion for knowing the details about everything in the business. B. Understands sales and marketing and how to impact it relative to the products-slash-services provided by the business. C cares for all members of the company, and has an open-door policy to speak confidentially slash cordially. D. Quick to assess all facts of a problem, makes decisions to direct the company, slow to change the plans. E. Understands that there needs to be a structure in place for all team members to follow in their own capacity. F. Believes in knowing how to do every job and in every capacity of the business, but gives people a chance to grow. G. Defends the staff from unwarranted negative comments, regardless of source. H. Believes in setting goals, making them measurable, relative, specific and sets a time limit for their obtainment. 1. Quick to spread the recognition for a job well done, deflects praise from self to staff, accepts responsibility for errors. J. Becomes everyone's best boss ever. Hi. My name is Lucas. I work in communications with Jessica. She asked me to go over the next several roles in your new home-based business. As before, if we can help you with any questions, give us a call at 800-750-8767. Let's get started. Sales Manager. The minimum skills necessary to be the sales manager of your own home-based business, with hope to create something which is profitable and sustains growth include the following suggestions. A. Clearly, you must know how to sell. B. Most new salespeople use the formula features, function, benefits, people buy to solve a problem. C. This job implies that you are willing to go outside your comfort zone and initiate conversations about your product. D. Sell yourself first, then your company, then your product or service. E. 
trust is a big issue from the perspective of the client. If they don't trust you, they won't buy anything. F. How well do you know the product slash service? How well do you know the company? Management? The competition? G. People who pay more than $1,000 want solid service and support. You need to sell that concept to them. H. Once you have made a sale, don't abandon or ignore the client. Send thank you note and follow-up calls after the sale. I. Surprise your client with periodic calls to see how everything is going. I used to call my clients up to seven years after the first sale. J. You can't provide too much service or give too much attention to your past sales. That's how to gain referrals. K. If you don't ask for referrals, you won't get them. L. Send holiday cards and phone calls to all clients, including prospects who didn't buy from you initially. M. Be the one person that customers call, knowing you will take care of them, or find the solution to their problem. N. My phrase was, I'll burn the Venetian blinds down to get you the answers from the ivory tower. I got their attention and business. O. Reviews and understands the 8-minute sales presentation https colon slash slash youtube b slash m one qz g0 that eight minute presentation from gene irwin is very important here it is again a little slower https colon slash slash y o u t u dot b e slash c u t x m one qz hyphen g0 marketing manager the minimum skills necessary to be the marketing manager of your own home-based business include the following suggestions. A. Marketing is the process of finding prospects who may want your product or service. B. Traditional methods included going door-to-door, -door, phone calls, TV and radio, and newspaper ads, internet ads, social media ads. C. The secret to marketing is to clearly define your ideal customer and then aggressively go after that demographic. D. We sometimes think mass advertising is the initial way to go, with 1-2% to response rate acceptable. E. Problem with mass advertising, like newspaper or mailers, you will go broke before you see any results. F. People stop advertising after just a few exposures, not realizing that it takes time and repetitive exposures to see results. G. Marketing is the 1. Right approach. 2. Right demographic target. 3. Right timing. 4. Right solution of their problem. H. Do you know how to write sales copy? Formally referred to as advertisements, most people don't do it well. I. What are your competitors doing? Who are they advertising, and what are they saying? Learn from their mistakes. J. Your sales manager needs your prospecting for clients to work and to provide leads to them to follow up with sales activities. K. Usually, at the beginning of a startup, the marketing is done by the sales manager. L. Put tremendous amount of consistent non-stop energy at the front end of the marketing campaign, the leads will follow. M. Learn how to use the phone properly, then consider using phone burner registered to really increase your marketing efforts nationwide. N. Remember your ABCs. Always be chasing new concepts for prospective leads. Leads are developed into repeat customers. Service Manager The minimum skills necessary to be the service manager of your own home-based business include the following suggestions. A. Service is the bad news department of any company. Why? Because they catch all of the negative client comments. B. Being a service rep for any company means dealing with a disgruntled customer. It's not your fault, but it feels that way. C. The service manager must understand and help develop every detail of the terms of sale and support agreement. D. Learn every single word, sentence, paragraph and legal implications of what it is the customer can expect to receive. E. If the client has a grievance against your product or company, you are the first line of defense to protect your company. F. Nobody likes to deal with negative phone calls every day. But, that's the job. If done right, you'll gain a strong customer. G. The service manager will need to get involved with writing the technical product instructions for every product delivered. H. In the product instruction manual, show what the product does, how to use it, how to maintain it, what the warranty is. I. Make sure all product and service deliverables are clearly written out for the client and walk them through it at delivery time. J. 
for complicated products slash services, it is always best to get a sign-off and acceptance from the client of the product delivered. K. Train your staff to be pleasant on the phone and reassure each customer who calls that you'll solve every issue for the client. L. Cheer up. You usually have the night to recover before tomorrow's negative calls begin. M. How do you preempt negative calls? Make sure your people are on top of all service and maintenance calls ahead of time. Thanks, Lucas. I'll take the next couple of sections, and Jean will conclude with concepts from mentors. Office and Administration Manager The minimum skills necessary to be the office and administration manager of your own home-based business include the following suggestions. Uh, keeping yourself and your office staff on a tight adherence to schedules will quickly make your days run much smoother. B. Give everyone a track to run on and a way to keep score. Some repetitive tasks require frequent breaks to avoid distraction. C. Your office staff, reservation desk and front desk are the first representatives your client sees in person. Make it successful. D. In order to manage the business you need to understand your MDR, minimum daily requirements. E. Minimum daily requirements, MDR, include knowing sales numbers, daily cost, salary, numbers, and forecasted sales weekly. F. If you don't measure it, you can't manage it. Find a way to measure every business detail or KPI, key performance indicators. G. Initially, with just one or two people wearing multiple hats or jobs, someone has to mind the store. How much money is spent? H. Most new business owners don't pay themselves a salary initially. That is why getting your funding in place is so important. I. Determine your daily expenditure by taking all personnel and multiply by monthly salary, divided by 29. That is the daily rate. J. Take all available funds and divide by daily burn rate total, and that's how many days you can operate without sales cash flow. K. Become very focused on the details of your business. Know your numbers. Plan your work. Work your plan. L. What is the cost to attract a new client? How much is each new client worth to your business? M. These are the types of things that all good administration managers need to know in order to advise senior management of the next step in the sales support process. This is Jessica, providing you with the final major section of the 3D Business Launch Model Podcast number 3. What skills do you have? Jean will then conclude with concepts from the mentor's point of view. We hope that you have enjoyed this podcast from 3D BLM, concerning the skills necessary to own and run your home-based business. Remember, you can always call 24-7 to our nationwide contact line, 800-750-8767. We will be happy to assist you in any way possible. Again, thank you for your time and listening. Be sure to review a document copy of this podcast from our video podcast series. Legal and Accounting The minimum skills necessary to manage the legal and accounting side of your own home-based business include the following suggestions. A. Until your business reaches weekly invoices and multiple accounts receivable, it's best to use an external bookkeeper for now. B. There is no a magic a number when to use an internal accounting department. But you will know as that time approaches. C. For now, focus on sales. The accounting portion of the receivables will come into play as your business grows. D. The same can be said for an internal legal department. Having an attorney on staff will be very expensive, with a low return. E. Attorneys by nature are defensive. They defend you from collateral damage, and sometimes enforce your trademarks, etc. F. One such approach I've recommended to all home-based business, use the following advice, legal shield. With the exception of creating a great invoice with warranty information, typically called your terms and conditions of sale. You most likely won't need legal representation until there is an external threat to the business issue. In this situation, until you are large enough to handle the cost of a part-time firm representing your business, consider using a prepaid legal service known as Prepaid Legal in the past, now known as LegalShield.com. They are low cost and give you immediate access to attorneys as part of your monthly service. I've had them protect my small consulting firm for over 20 years. 
They literally will cost just a few dollars a day, but the return you receive from their direction and help will be more than worth it. This is Jessica, Director of 3D BLM Communications. Thanks for listening. Here is Jean Irwin to tell you about what the mentoring process does to help you succeed in your very own home-based business. Bye! For now. Thanks, Jessica. Hello, friend. This is Jean Irwin, founder of the 3D Business Launch Model, wrapping up this podcast number three, What Skills Do You Have? by talking to you about mentors. The minimum skills necessary to attract mentors to your home-based business with hopes to create something which is profitable and sustain growth include the following recommendations. When I coach or mentor a company, I look for three things, coachability, positive attitude, and success potential. Once we agree on a path for your small business, my company can advise you on the shortest path to success. But the actual doing of the work to get on that path, progress on the path, and secure sales is up to you. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. It takes focus, hard work, homework, and captivation of the available market. If your mentor hasn't created successful businesses nor dealt with substantial failures and overcame them, how will you? Some businesses are like ducks on a pond waiting for customers to land on the water. Think retail. I don't like retail businesses for two reasons. Number one, no major barrier to entry. In other words, anybody can duplicate it. Number two, they own the USP or unique selling proposition is price. Two grocery stores sell exactly the same product, differentiated only by price, and the distance you have to drive to get there. No thanks. As a mentor, I will help you quickly develop your unique selling proposition or USP. It will set you apart from all others. I'll also show you in a coaching call how to find the early adopters of your product and or service. Some home-based businesses, such as a hairdresser, requires having a unique license. Don't overlook that. And make sure you take my initial mini course labeled HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash gene hyphen Irwin dot mykajabi spelled M-Y-K-A-J-A-B-I dot com forward slash your hyphen first hyphen home hyphen based hyphen business. Look it up. You'll be glad you did. Finally, there is a special 72-hour calendar within that course that helps guide you through your first week in business. I've used that guide to produce a recurring $6 million a year for a recent company I created. It really works. Well, friends, this is Gene Irwin, the founder of the 3D Business Launch Model, looking forward to providing you more podcasts in the future and anything that we can do to help you. Give us a call at 1-800-750-8767. We'd be glad to talk to you. Or send us an email at ghigfac at aol.com. Looking forward to working with you. This is Gene Irwin. You have a great day.